Okay, open up your Bible, Psalm 37, for this lesson that we have today, Psalm 37. And uh, let me read this to you. This is late breaking news. The supply chain bottlenecks around the world have caused record shortages of many products that American consumers are used to having readily available. That includes food, household goods, electronics, automobiles, supplies of every kind, including baby formula. Prices are also increasing on goods and services, including gas at the pump. Experts have warned that, warned that problems will likely get worse before they get better. I have three questions that I want to ask you at the beginning of this message. Question number one, how many faithful tithers are in the room? <clears throat> Question number two, how many are generous sowers? Question number three, how many have a covenant of prosperity with God? All right, I'd like to announce to you then you are exempt and redeemed. You are exempt and redeemed from supply chain disruptions. You are exempt and redeemed from severe shortage and extreme scarcity. You are exempt from inflation and economic downturns. That's good news today. That's good news today. We are, as we will learn in just a moment, exempt from these things in the same way that the children of Israel there was light in the land of Goshen when there was darkness in the land of Egypt. And there's definitely darkness out there. But the Lord has us here for a reason and a purpose, a very powerful reason, a very powerful purpose. And in talking about this today, there's something that I wanted to particularly center up on, and that is the provisional side of our God. He can provide for us in the most disastrous times. He can supply for us even when there seems like there's a shortage that's going on. And what we have to do is take our stand on the living Word of God and not allow that to affect us, to control us, or even cause us to think that there's going to be any problem in us being able to access what we need to access. We don't just survive in times like these. <clears throat> what do we do? We thrive. We thrive. And so let's look at verses 18 and 19. Psalm 37. It says, The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Now that word famine there, that is extreme shortage. That is lack <clears throat> to a, a powerful degree. And this says that they shall not be ashamed in the evil times. And <clears throat> in the days of famine, they will be satisfied. So I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what is going on around us because I really sense that we're sailing into some times right now that are extremely challenging for some. But we who are of the faith family know who our God is and we know who our provider is and we know who our supplier is. It says in verse 9 of the New Living Translation, they will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. <clears throat> Even in a time of lack and shortage, we will have more than enough. Now, I like the message translation of this one. It says, in hard times, they'll hold their heads high. When the shelves are bare, they'll be full. Yeah. Glory to God. <clears throat> The Lord will supply. The Lord will provide. Turn to John chapter 17 with me. John 17. And looking at verse 13, we just have to see ourselves differently. We have to see ourselves in who we are in Christ and what belongs to us in Christ. 
And <clears throat> over the last few years, the ministry, we have faced challenges. We have faced difficulties. And during the, what we called Snowvid or Snowmageddon that we went through, and being the operations being shut down for over a week, we didn't stop. We did not stop preaching the word. We found out ways to keep the Victory broadcast, Victory Channel broadcasting. I mean, the team that we have is an amazing team. And we did not. We were working still with all of that going on and all that was taking place. That was the miraculous. And there is a place that you and I live in in times like this where we know that God supplies us. We know that no matter what's going on out there, we are taken care of in here. And the good thing about it is the Lord takes care of us because we are able to take care of and help other people to the degree that they'll be wondering, how do they do it? How are they making it? In these most challenging times that we are in, some of the most challenging times that we have seen in years of what's going on and what is happening and what is taking place. And like this says in the message translation, in hard times, they will hold their head, heads high. When the shelves are bare, they'll be full. Yours will be full when the shelves are bare. So in John chapter 17, <clears throat> I'm going to start with this in verse 13. And the point that I want to make in this particular section here is that we are separated from the world's failing system. There is a wall of redemption that is around believers. If you will receive that, if you will take that, if you will believe the impossible, that God will provide and God will supply whatever we need whenever we need it. There is money out there and plenty of it. And so we will prosper during these tough times that we are in. John 17, 13. Now I'm reading it from the New King James Version. <clears throat> but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I remember, um, you, Rick, you carried a, a line of clothing, which I'm not sure if you still carry it, not of this world. Not of this world. And that's what it's saying here. We are not of this world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. There's a scripture in 1 John that talks about the evil one touches us not. There was a television show <clears throat> during the 60s, early 60s, I remember watching it as a child, not a kid, but a child. <laughs> and it was called The Untouchables. The Untouchables. And then the movie came out later on, Kevin Costner, um, uh, who else was in it? Sean Connery was in it, The Untouchables. And that's who we are. I preached that at, at your dad's church many years ago. The, we are the untouchables. We are the wicked one touches us not. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. We are not of this world. We are of another world. We are of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> we are here for a period of time. Yes. Yes. When the rapture takes place, then we go. Yes. Yes. We'll be there seven years. Yes. Then we come back. Yes. We take over this thing. Yes. And so we're not of this world. <clears throat> we are not of the worldly system. Yes. The worldly system that we are seeing around us right now. We're not of this world. We're in it, we're not of it. And he says, Sep sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Yes. The word of faith, now more than ever, 
Now more than ever, we have to preach the word of faith because the word of God is truth and we are separated from this world by the word of God. Now, we're not separated from the people. We love the people, and we want the people to know what we know, and we want the people to be saved, and we want the people to, to miss going to hell. But we are definitely not of the world system. Really, the way it should work is you move into a neighborhood, and you change the neighborhood. <clears throat> The neighborhood changes because of you. Your surrounding changes because of you. Because you've got the Eden, the, the Garden of Eden effect working on the inside of you. That garden is still alive in us. And the whole purpose of the garden was for God to have mankind till that garden, keep that garden, and take it all over the universe. And so we live from that place of the Garden of Eden. So Jesus says, sanctify them, separate them by your truth. Your word is truth. So listen to this statement. We are not subject to, nor do we live under the dominion, the rule, the control, or the influence of whichever the way the economy is going. Amen. And you could really say there, whichever way the world is going. I'm not going with it. <clears throat> You're not going with it. We are not subject to, nor we do, do we live under the dominion, the rule, the control, or the influence of whichever way the economy is going, whichever way the world is going. You and I have authority over this thing. We have authority. We need to be exercising that authority. But we're not subject to it. We're not subject to whichever way the economy, and I'm talking about the economy right now, whichever way the economy goes. And they're talking about looking for this inflation that's coming up and looking for these, these, these uh, hard times financially that are coming up. And there may be hard times financially coming up, but you and I are not touched by it. Say, I'm not touched by it. <laughs> I am not subject to it. <laughs> I do not live under the dominion of it. We are set apart from the world system. We are governed by another economy and another system. Oh, you're repeating what I'm saying. <laughs> I didn't tell you to stop repeating. Okay, so let's do that, all right? We are set apart. <laughs> From the, world system. From the world system, we are governed by another economy, by another economy. And, another system, and another system, the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. We, prosper we prosper in troubled times. In troubled times. Come on, give God praise. Yeah. Thanksgiving for that. We prosper in troubled times. So look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We are separated from the evil that is in this world. There's a, there's a glory that's around us. There's, there is a... We are like walking, talking arcs of the covenant. We carry the glory with us. And that's why disease cannot exist in us. That is why sickness cannot enter us. That is why we are delivered from whichever way they're saying the economy is going. We're delivered from that. We are redeemed from the curse of lack and shortage. Say, I am, I am redeemed, redeemed from the curse of lack, and of lack and shortage. Now this says in verses 13 and 14 from the New King James Version, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, <clears throat> having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is any, everyone who hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
So we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And just to refresh myself in that word redeemed, the word redeemed means to be ransomed, to be bought back, or, <clears throat> and I just noticed this for the first time the other day, to be rescued from loss. To be rescued from loss. We don't have loss. <clears throat> Investments that we have. Those investments prosper. Amen. They're prospering. And I was hearing somebody talk on television the other day about, about investments going down and losing your investment. I'm redeemed from loss. Amen. The devourer in my household is rebuked. Amen. We are tithers. I was a tither before I met Pastor Terry and we became we became combined tithers the day we were married and we have tithed ever since. And so the devourer or the seed eater is rebuked, shut down, paralyzed from our household. I thank God for the tithe. I thank God for the ability to tithe. I'm not trying to get away from the tithe. I'm trying to get into the tithe. Because that is a place of protection in our lives, especially in times like this. So we've been rescued from loss. Now he's talking here about the curse of the law and the blessing of Abraham. You don't have to turn there, but just for a few moments, let's talk about the blessing of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. First of all, the curse of the law is listed in verses 15 through 68 of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And you should read them. You should read the curses. Why? Because you find out what you've been redeemed from. You find out what you've been delivered, delivered from. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, let me just read to you three of the scriptures from the curse of the law that we've been redeemed from. For instance, in the New Living Translation of verse 30, Deuteronomy 28, it says, you will build a house, but someone else will live in it. That's the curse of lack. That's the curse of poverty. Verse 38, <clears throat> New Living Translation, you will plant much, but harvest little, for the locusts will eat your crops. The locusts cannot eat our crops. They cannot destroy our harvest. Our harvest prospers. Our fruit is prospering. As a matter of fact, I just need to read this to you. <clears throat> this is Malachi chapter 3, talking about the tithe. Verse 10 of chapter 3. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. When it says they're open, it says cut loose and throw open. When he cuts loose and throws open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Then he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That word rebuke means to, cri to cripple, paralyze, stop and shut down. I will rebuke the devourer. Say the devourer is rebuked. The devourer is rebuked. In, my In my life. Paralyzed. 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 Cripple. Shut down and stopped. It says he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightsome land, saith the Lord. You give God what is his, he will protect what is yours. This really is a protection plan. I don't know if you've ever had an insurance plan. Let's say you had an insurance plan on, on things in your house, such as a water heater. And in that insurance plan, you can, if it breaks down, you can't walk 20 feet to it or they cancel the insurance. I mean, sometimes it gets to be that way. There's whole pages of listed how, what, what will annul that insurance policy? Everything in the Word is covered. It's covered. 
everything that we have, everything that we own, it's covered by the blood. It's covered. It's covered. And the tithe is the protection that we have in the days that we live in. Do I tithe on the net or do I tithe on the gross? There's no question about it. You want the full benefit? You tithe, you tithe and give that tithe in faith, believing God, and that will set up a protection around you that the de devourer cannot penetrate. <clears throat> when we were going through that, uh, that, that snow and weather serious incident in the state of Texas and some other states, we were dealing with issues in our house. I'll tell you what, we were rebuking the devil. We are tithers. You cannot touch us. You cannot touch our household. And there are things that we had to work th through, things that we had to do. Everybody faces challenges. Everyone faces challenges. We do. The ministry has over the years. But we have stood in faith and believed God and would not quit, would not give up, and keep going in bulldog faith and refuse to allow the devil to take over. So we are, we are protected by that tithe. So going back to Deuteronomy 28, the curse, part of the curse is verse 48. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. That's the curse of the law. But you and I have been redeemed from the curse of lack. We've been redeemed from the curse of shortage. When you read the blessing of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28, for instance, in verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on you and they will overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 11, the Amplified. I so enjoy this scripture. The Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. <clears throat> Now, the blessing of Abraham does not depend on the state of the economy. You don't look to the news to determine whether or not the blessing is going to work today. It works. And it works all the time. And it works, it works at its best. When you and I are facing the most impossible situations and they're telling us that everything is falling apart, they're telling us the economy is going down. They're telling us that we're, we're sailing into dark times. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. God will get it to us. He'll do it. I want to quote something from Pastor Bill Winston. He said, something is coming to the economy. Whatever it may be. If a person is operating in kingdom principles, it will be just like they are in the ark at the time of the flood of Noah. The worse conditions got, the higher Noah rose. The worse things get, the higher kingdom people will rise in prominence in the earth. So Pastor Bill is saying something here about the upcoming economy. But whatever it is, whatever it is, the individual that is operating in the principles of faith, the individual that is feeding on the word constantly, the individual who is continually going to church and being fed by a pastor, the individual who keeps sowing into the kingdom, the individual who keeps tithing, who keeps confessing the word, who keeps doing exactly what they know to do, the worse it gets, the higher they will rise the higher they will rise. <clears throat> and eventually, they'll be coming to us. They'll be coming to the church. What are you doing? How are you handling it? How are you handling these things? When, when businesses are folding, things are going down, the church is thriving. And the people of the church are thriving. And those of you, how many of you have your own businesses? Let me see your hands. <clears throat> businesses. You've got your own businesses. I believe that whatever is coming, your businesses are going to thrive and be successful. They're going to get, 
They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We went through that pandemic time, and during that pandemic time, Kenneth Copa Ministries' income increased. It increased. It went the other direction. And so what we have to do is we have to, we have to get into a huddle with each other and tell each other we are not going to fail. Whatever's coming, whatever's going to happen, we are not going to fail. We are going to prosper. We're going to prosper all the way through it. Why? Because we are redeemed from the curse of shortage and lack. <clears throat> and like what Brother Copeland said today about gas. You know, it doesn't matter if gas goes to $50 a gallon. The Lord will get you what you need. He will provide for you. He will make sure you have exactly what you need to have. The worse things get, the higher kingdom people will rise in prominence in the earth. How many kingdom people do we have in here today? <clears throat> and we've got kingdom people that are watching us all over the world right now. We are not moved by what we see. We are only moved by the living, breathing Word of God in our lives. We have to come to the place where we've said this before, but it has to become a reality to us. God is my source. Amen. Say it three times. God is my source. Say it again. God is my source. Say it one more time. God is my source source. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> I'm just endeavoring in this time that we have together, this assignment that the Lord gave me to give to you, yes, is to get you outside of what the world, thinking the way the world is thinking. And get us into a place that we are thinking in accordance with the Word of God and what it says to us and what it promises to us so that we can get through whatever times that are coming up and whatever times that are facing. Amen. God is our supply chain and provider. The blessing is not hinging on whether a ship makes port. He will supernaturally provide what you need to have. Whether it's gas or baby formula, or whatever it is. Now is the time to believe God and His Word like we have never believed Him before. Now is the time to get serious about these things that we've been talking about, preaching about, teaching about. The time has come where we are going to together stand on the Word of God. And the devil is not going to roll over us. Absolutely not. God is our supply chain and our provider. Verse 19, Philippians 4, 19 in the Amplified Translation. My God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So, it would be well worth it to meditate that scripture, think about it, let it get down on the inside of you. Let these words resonate in your heart, resonate in your life, resonate through your mouth. My God, yeah, go ahead, say it. <clears throat> Will liberally supply, liberally supply, fill to the full, my every need, My every need. According, to according to His riches, in glory, in, glory. in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's who we are. That's who we are. There are people out there right now that do not believe this. They're running scared. They're in fear. And they need to hear from you. Every one of us has friends that we can minister to. Every one of us has people that we can talk to because people are concerned about what is happening and the decisions that are being made and, and some of the most crazy stuff that we've ever seen. 
but we are the untouchables. <clears throat> we are redeemed from the curse of shortage and lack. We live in a constant state of increase. And just because we are seeing a slowdown in the economy does not mean that the spirit of increase is not working on us. It, on the contrary, it's speeding up. It's increasing. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So my God will liberally supply, fill to the full your every need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's according to. Those two words, according to, are so important. According to tells us that it is in line with what our source of supply is. He will fill to the full your every need according to His riches in glory. The glory of God. The presence of God that is heavy with everything good. Amen. His riches in glory. That's our source. That's the source. One day, I was reading the Rick Renner translation of Philippians 4.19. And what a translation that is. It is so full. It is so powerful. Let me read it to you. This is the Rick Renner translation. Philippians 4.19. My God will supply your needs so completely that he will eliminate all your deficiencies. He will meet all your physical and tangible needs until you are so full you have no more capacity to hold anything else. He will supply your needs until you are totally filled, packed full, and overflowing to the point of bursting at the seams and spilling over. Now, is that, is that not a rich, rich translation of Philippians 4.19? My God will supply your needs so completely so absolutely completely that he will eliminate all deficiencies. Anything that is missing, anything that is broken, he will replace it, he will fix it, he will, he will replenish it. And really, we should be operating under the blessing. Replenish the earth. <clears throat> when it runs out, refill it. So <clears throat> he will meet all, say all. All, all your physical and tangible needs until you are so full you have no more capacity to hold anything else. He will supply your needs until you are totally filled, packed fill, full and overflowing to the point of bursting at the seams and spilling over. Amen. I'll interject this here. It is the will of God for us to live debt free. Yes. It is God's will for you and I to live debt free. That's, right. That's something that Pastor Terry and I worked on for some years. To be able to live debt free. <clears throat> we had a home. We paid it off. And the Lord told us to sow it. We didn't have another house in sight. Honestly, and this was many years ago, but honestly, I had to struggle with it because all I could envision us was living, living in a car somewhere with our kids. God is better than that. He's better than that. So we got into another house. We borrowed for that house. And then we were getting out of that, that debt situation. And the Lord, through a series of incidents, we are finally now, we're living in a house that is completely and totally debt free. And the advice that I have for you is, first of all, there, <clears throat> there is, I remember the day that I was on the broadcast with Brother Copeland. We had just sown this house to some people. Then we borrowed money to get into a house. I'm on the broadcast with Brother Copeland years ago. Oh, somebody remembers that. I can't seem to shake that one. 
that one, that one has, I won't say it's come back to haunt me because it doesn't haunt me, but it, I, I remember a few months after that broadcast aired. Well, let me tell you what we did on the broadcast for those of you who don't know. I decided because I, we were, Terry and I were really pressing into debt freedom, studying it, confessing it. I got, I, I was endeavoring to feed my spirit. I got Leroy Thompson's, whatever it was, 18 cassette tape series on Money Cometh. Oh, yeah. Listening to it, feeding on it, feeding on it. And I was putting together notes. So Kenneth invited me to come on the broadcast with him. And he said, George, whatever the topic is you want to preach. And I said, well, I'm going to, we're going to preach on debt freedom. I wasn't debt free yet, but we're going to preach on debt freedom. So we got in there and we went Monday and Tuesday teaching about debt freedom. And we got to Wednesday and he looked at me and he said, George, tell me something. He said, you, you paid off a house, you sold the house to someone else, and then you borrowed the money to go into that other house. He said, why? <laughs> That's when all of eternity slowed down <laughs> in my life. <laughs> and it was almost like he was saying, why did you borrow the money? And so everything just, everything just kind of shut down. There was a, it was just probably a matter of seconds, but it felt like minutes were going by when there was total silence. And all I could think to myself was, this is good for me. This is good for me. This is good for me. I'm being corrected on worldwide television right now. This is good for me. This is really good for me. And I can remember when he said that, um, Carol Hill was running camera, my camera. And I can remember when he said that to me, Carol's behind her camera and she went. <laughs> well, the long story short of it was he explained about the development of faith and what we need to do. And, and the thing I was going to tell you was that we, we, we went to Russia some years or several months after that. And I remember we, we checked in, we were there to be at a meeting with Rick Renner and we checked in to this hotel, which is no longer there, but it's called the Hotel Russia, Hotel Russia. And I can remember we had a view right over the Kremlin and I turned on the television and there is Brother Copeland and me, <laughs> that broadcast. Except we were saying it in Russian to each other. I know, because I know the look on my face when he said it to me. I know exactly the look on my face. <clears throat> so Pastor Terry and I, we spent, we spent a lot of time talking about studying, preaching on becoming debt free. And we finally did it. We finally made it to that place. It took faith and patience to do it. There were times like it seemed like it would not happen. But for anybody who's believing to get out of debt, I'll recommend, I'll recommend some things to you because Brother Copeland said to me, we were actually having lunch during the break of that taping that day. And I said, Brother Copeland, what happens to me as a pastor when I have a young couple to me, they're wanting to buy a house, they don't have the cash for it. What, what do they do? What do they do? And he said to me, he said, I would hand them this series. Well, he was handing me like air. <laughs> it, there was nothing there. It was like a series for them to listen to and to develop their faith in debt freedom. So what happened from that time until now, we have developed several series at Kenneth Copeland Ministries of how to get debt free, how to live debt free. Gloria and I did about four weeks teaching on how to be debt free. And so, and then there are several other uh, debt free materials that we have that people can listen to and feed their faith on. It is so critical that during this hour and during this time, we feed our faith on these things. And that those of you who are believing to be debt free, to get a hold of that material, you just look it up. KCM, and you could actually, you can go online. All, all of the, 
They, the outlines that we taught from there are available from kcm.org, as well as you can go on YouTube and you can, you could actually Google or not go, go to YouTube and, and just look up Pastor George and Gloria Debt Freedom. There it is. There it is. It's out there. It's out there. But you have to feed on that because we have to break through what the world is telling us, what the world is saying to us. You'll never get debt free. You'll never have all of your bills paid. You'll never get to the place where you'll be able to be paid and you're not, you're not, you'll always be living paycheck to paycheck. Shut up! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> My mother taught me not to say that. But that's what people do. They live paycheck to paycheck and that is no way to live. There are ministries that live offering to offering. And that's no way to live either. Kenneth Copeland Ministries does not live offering to offering. We have reserves. We've got, as Jesse says, buffers. Jesse, Jesse's on our board and he calls me a lot. He preaches to me a lot. And I'm, I'm thrilled for it. But he talks to me. He says, I believe, George, I believe in the buffer. I believe in the buffer, having enough money in there for whatever will come, whatever will happen. What we went through with the snow situation, the freeze that we went through, I'm so thankful that we had a buffer because we were able to continue to pay our staff. We were able to continue to operate. The Lord said he would bless your storehouses. Storehouses. So get out of the mentality that it's a bad thing for a Christian to have a storehouse or to have accounts. See yourself with those accounts. And get out of the whatever traditional mentality that you've ever been exposed to about that. Because we're going to need it. We're going to need it. We, have a, we, we maintain a lot of money in our benevolence funds. A lot of money. So when this came up with the Ukrainian Jews, and that was, that was something that needed to be able to be done right away. As I told you earlier today, we've been able to help 15, was it 15,000, close to 15,000 Ukrainian Jews get from Ukraine all the way to Israel. Back to Israel. Praise God. But because I'm talking to our partners, I just wanted to let you know that we were able at the beginning before we started receiving the offerings for it, we were able to take, I think it was $2.1 million out of our benevolent account and it did not put a dent. Did not put a dent. See, what we're talking about here is enlarging your capacity to believe God for the fullness of the provision that he wants to give to you, that he wants to supply to you. And the whole purpose of what we're doing is to be able to help people and to be able to have that much in reserve to be able to take out like that, just like that. And not it not affect the flow of the finances. I believe you're getting that way. I believe you're getting that way. I believe that we're all moving into a place where the Lord is providing and we're seeing that provision and there are multiple streams of income that are coming into your life. Oh, you need to be more excited about that. God is our source. Say, God is my source. Not the government. Not man. My God is my source. It certainly would not hurt to meditate on that and think on that phrase, God is my source. That you can write down this scripture, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, the Amplified Translation. Yet for us, there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. God is my source. God is my source. Whatever it is that's needed. Whatever is needed in your business, your household, your family, your church, your ministry, God is our source. He will provide. He will supply. And no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, God is not looking down from heaven and, go and watching uh, uh, MSNBC. He's not doing that. He's not doing that. Now we see here the economy is falling apart and God is not going, oh my God. 
He's not doing that. I don't think he would do that. He's not doing that. He's looking at his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So God is not our source. Say, God, God, is, my, God is my source. God is my source. Not, man, not man. Not the government. Not the you know, it says in James 1.17, Amplified, every good gift and every perfect, free, large, and full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light. Free, large, and full gift is from God. God is my source. 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 He is my source. I like this quote from Creflo A. Dollar. El Shaddai will demonstrate provisional miracles that are contrary to natural events. That's a good quote. El Shaddai will demonstrate provision, provisional miracles that are contrary to natural events. In this scripture that I was re reading here, from, I'll just read this to you. Psalm 37, 25, I was young and now I am old, yet I had never. Now in my notes, I capitalized the word never. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Never. Say never. 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 I'm going to give you five scriptures about the fact that we lack nothing. We lack nothing. There is no lack in our lives. There's no shortage in our lives. God is our source. And let me give these scriptures to you and I'll read them. Psalm 23, 1 from the Amplified Translation. The Lord is my shepherd to feed Guide and shield me. I shall not lack. Amen. Amen. Say, I shall not lack. I, shall not lack. <laughs> I don't care what they say. I don't care what's going on. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what it looks like out there. I shall not lack. Amen. Amen. You will not lack. Amen. That was Psalm 23, 1. The Psalm 84, 11. This is the Passion Translation. For the Lord God is brighter than the brilliance of a sunrise. Wrapping himself around me like a shield, he is so generous with his gifts of grace and glory. Those who walk along his paths with integrity will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. Amen. That is a great scripture. Yes. That's a great scripture. Those who walk along his paths with integrity will never lack one thing they need. Not one. He provides it all. Father, I receive that. I receive that. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive that. Write this one down. Psalm 34, 9 and 10. New Living. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. We are redeemed from lack. We're redeemed from lack. We're redeemed from shortage. We're redeemed from... Supply chain issues. We get it supernaturally. It comes supernaturally. When people are waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, we are getting and getting and getting and getting and getting. Why? Because of supernatural provision. That's a provision that is over, above, and beyond the natural realm. We're living in the supernatural realm. We are living in the supernatural realm. I like this in Deuteronomy 2.7, the New Living Translation. Deuteronomy 2.7. For the Lord your God has blessed you in everything you've done. He has watched your every step through this great wilderness. During these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. Look at the faithfulness of God. 
Look at how good he is to us. Look how faithful he is to, he is to us. And all we have to do is believe him and receive from him. Oh, Lord, I receive this. I, rece I receive this today. I receive. I receive this revelation today that I'm redeemed from shortage and lack. Lord, you are the provider. You are the supplier. And then it says in Luke 22, 35, Luke 22, 35, the ESV translation, he's talking, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, when I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, nothing, nothing, nothing. Last scripture, Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah 60. And I'll say this to you first. The next time you are tempted to be in fear about the future, where provision is concerned, I want you to shout out loud, the camels are coming. <laughs> the camels are coming. Oh, and they're loaded. They're loaded. <laughs> What's the load? It looks like salt. It what? Salt. Well, let's read. Let's read here in, in Isaiah 60 and find out what it is. Let's take a look at that. Maybe it's salt. Maybe it's something else. All right. <clears throat> Isaiah 60, verse 1. This is the New King James. Arise, shine. For your light has come. So this scripture here is a description of us now here. This is a picture of us. You find it all through scripture. You find the separation effect. You find scriptures that just shout out the difference. Same conditions different results. Same conditions, different results. Same conditions that are going on, but different results. You've got people believing God, using their faith in the midst of what's going on with the economy. And those people who are believing God and using their faith, they are prospering. Then you've got other people who don't care about God at all, who don't, who don't acknowledge Him, don't look to him, and they are being pulled every which way that economy is going. We are not subject to the economy. We are subject to the principles of the kingdom of God and his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And there's a separation effect. I call it a separation effect. Same conditions, different results. Let me read an example of one of those scriptures to you. This is from Luke chapter 6. In 46 it says, And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I'll show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house. He dug deep, laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the storm beat vehemently upon that house, it could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. But he that hears and does not do the word is like a man without a foundation, which built a house upon the earth against which the same storm. Now I added the word same, but it's the same storm. Same storm hit. <clears throat> same storm hit did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Same conditions, different results. Have you ever seen a picture? And this picture has been out there for quite some time. There was a hurricane that blew through Florida. And there's a picture of all of these houses just flattened and one house standing. Have you ever seen that picture? One house standing, completely untouched by the storm. One house that stands. That's a picture of us. That's a picture of you and me. I mean, these are serious times. 
These are serious times, and we don't want people to suffer through them. But because of wherever they are in their stand or not their stand on the Word of God, there are consequences that will be suffered. But where you and I are concerned, our house will stand. It will stand. And we'll be able to reach out and help others. Be able to minister to others. Be able to change others' lives through what we know and through what we have. So this in Isaiah 60 is a picture of what you and I are right now, where we are today. Crazy stuff going on. Some of the most wild decisions that are being made. But the church will not fall. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So, going back to that verse 1, chapter 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But here we go. Same conditions, different results. Deep darkness is upon the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. What is first mention of glory in the Bible? What is it? Wealth. Amen. Wealth shall be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Amen. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you will see and become radiant and your heart will swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. People are coming. Yes. People are coming. <clears throat> They're coming. They're going to come to the churches. They're going to come to the meetings. Why? Because of desperation. They don't know what to do. There are people living out there right now. They don't know what to do. They're looking at all of this. They're facing all of this. They're struggling in their finances. They don't know what to do. We do. We do. And we are here to help them. They will come running to us. You will see. You'll become radiant. Your heart will swell with joy. The abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Shall we talk about wealth transfer? Yes. Yes. Wealth transfer. Yes. Say, I believe. I, believe. I, receive. I receive. Supernatural. Supernatural. Wealth transfer. Wealth into the kingdom of God. There is money, money, money out there. And it belongs in the kingdom of God. It belongs with the churches. It belongs with the ministers. It belongs with the people. Because they know how to handle money. They don't let money handle them. They handle money. So the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephaph, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold. Gold and incense. And they shall pro proclaim the praises of the Lord. Well, it may seem like a strange phrase to you, the camels are coming, but it's going to come up on the inside of you when you're tempted to, to think about the lack of provision. And I've already made my decision about this several days ago as I was putting this together. <clears throat> Whenever we need something at the ministry, I'm going to say it. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. I said, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. They're loaded down with everything that we need. They talked about the, the camels of Sheba. Queen Sheba brought camels to Solomon. Filled with goods. Well, that image, that picture of what we are in, where this economy is concerned. I'm telling you, folks, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. When they try to tell you that you're not going to make it, what are you going to say? Yes. When they tell you you don't have enough, what are you going to say? Yes. When they tell you that there's not enough in the bank, what are you going to say? Yes. The camels are coming. 
The New Living Translation says, and where's my, my musicians? I need my musicians right now. <laughs> Minstrels, come up here right now. We're going to have fun. Um, in the New Living Translation, vast caravans of camels will converge on you. Say that five times fast. No. Vast <laughs> caravans of camels will converge. Caravans. Caravans. It's an Old Testament picture of the provisional hand of God. Yes. Say the camels are coming. Yes. I like this from the message translation. Streams of camel caravans as far as the eye can see. I think that would be an added way. Something that you can add to your confession of faith. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. As far as I can see. They're all lined up and they're coming. They're coming. The Passion Translation says, caravans of camels will cover your land. <laughs> that really sounds funny. The caravans of camels will cover your land. Young car camels loaded with goods. Loaded with goods. So in the, in the time of the economy and what's going on, we stand on that. Camels are coming. Rick, the camels are coming. They're, they're showing up. They are showing up. My goodness. They're showing up. They're down the street. They're coming to your house. They're coming to your ministry. They're loaded down with everything that you need. All you have to do is start unloading. Actually get your servants to do that. So <laughs> unload it and put it up. Okay. This is the last thing. And then we're going to receive our afternoon offering. The the word of the Lord came to me. This was Saturday, October 30th of 2021. And I felt it important to read to you as we finish up this message today. This is what the Lord said to me. During these times, I'm going to take care of you. Amen. That's the Lord talking. During these times, I am going to take care of you. If you'll believe me for the miraculous. David, go ahead. Believe me for the miraculous. I will provide for you what is lacking for others. I will fill your home. I will fill your business. I'll fill your ministry. I'll fill your wallet. I'll fill your purse. I'll fill your bank account. I'll fill your gas tank. And I'll fill everything else that needs to be filled. For I am the filler. <laughs> That's what he said. I am, in a capital T and a capital L, I am the filler. I am the filler. Provisions are on the way, just like the camel caravans of old. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. This statement represents a never-ending source of supply that will never dry up. I am not impoverished. This is the Lord speaking. I am not impoverished or have only a limited supply of what is needed in the earth. Supplies are not limited in my kingdom. I have it all and I want to get it to you. I have more than enough. I will locate it in the earth and I will get it to you. He will find it. He'll find it. He'll locate it. There, there, whatever you need, he will locate it and he will get it to you if you will dare to believe him. Do you dare to believe him? And they're telling you, it's going to take this long to get it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Supernatural provision. The camels are coming. I can see them. I can see them from afar. They're coming. They're coming. <clears throat> I will locate it on the earth and I will get it to you. Don't accept it when they say, I'm sorry, we're out of what you need. No, exactly. No. Just use your faith and align your mouth with my ability to do for you what is needed in the natural time of lack. And don't worry what the, when the cost rises. I'll make sure that you have more than enough to pay for whatever you need to fulfill my vision for your life. I am your supernatural supply chain. I am the God written about in Isaiah 45, 3. That says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. I will give you concealed treasures. I'll reveal to you my hidden stockpiles. I will take care of anyone and everyone who calls upon my name and exercises their faith for the impossible. My people do not lack in times of lack. 
Just look at Isaac. He reaped a hundredfold in a time of lack and shortage and famine. I'll say it again. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. And they're loaded down with all you would ever need. But you know me, I will give you more than what you need. So much so that you'll have enough to help others. And then the Lord said, now you say it. So repeat this after me. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to stand up. We need to do this the right way. We got to do this the right way. So what you need to do is take the stance. Say, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. I'm looking as far as the eye can see. They're loaded down with unlimited supplies. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. The camels are coming. Give God praise and glory and honor. Now go ahead and be seated. As we receive our offering today, I want you to name your seed. Can you guess? The camels are coming. The camels are coming. And they're loaded down. They're loaded down with everything that you need to be able to do. The Lord cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about you being provided. You are his sons and you are his daughters. And he loves his sons and daughters. And he wants to see to it that you are supplied. So I want you to call your seed this afternoon. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. Husbands and wives, you just need to be looking at each other and saying, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. And they're loaded down with all the supplies that we might need. Everything that is needed, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. Say it one more time. The camels are coming. All right. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. One of the ushers will bring to you an envelope. If you're writing a check, make it payable to KCM. Those of you who are giving online, go to kcm.org slash TV event. Your information will come up before you there. If you're texting, text event to 36609. Then those of you who are calling 877-281-6297, the, uh, the, the, ministered prayer, the prayer ministers that we have there are standing by talk, ready to talk to you. If you're gonna mail it in, KCM, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. So as we give today in this offering, I'm believing God that you're seeing it. You're seeing it. You are disconnected from the worldly system. You are plugged into a heavenly system. And that is your source of supply. That is the source of what you will need. That is the source of what God wants to get to you. And it is a supply that is unending and it will fill you up to the point of overflowing. Are you ready to give? Yes. Ushers, when the people are ready, go ahead and wait on them. And guys, do it.
So as we get ready to go, everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. And, and what we do at EMIC, we have a confession of faith that we make over our offerings. And I want to lead you in that right now. And then we'll be dismissed. Say this after me. Because we are tithers, the windows of heaven are open. The blessing is pouring out. Because we are sowers. We are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive our perfect assignments with raises and bonuses, contracts and benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates, inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, Supernatural wealth, transfer, supernatural wealth transfer, scholarships, scholarships. tuitions paid in full, paid in full. Bills, paid bills paid off, debts demolished, debts demolished. Royalties, received. royalties received, and properties acquired. And properties acquired. We, are we are getting our buildings, our lands, our, lands. our, houses. our houses, our vehicles, our, vehicles. our equipment. Our and our airplanes God is bringing into our hands seed even some great big whopper chunk seed we command our abundant harvest to come abundant harvest come to us now harvesting angels go get it bring it to us Right now, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. The camels are coming. Now give God praise and glory for them. All right, until prayer time at 6.30, we say to you, God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord.